Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about one of the most important things at the start of an engineering project that I think apply directly to Stormworks and my building technique. And it is the design criteria and design constraints. So let's get going on the explanation. One of the most common critiques that I get is why am I not using a modded workbench and uh, Lua editors and the type of things that I could make if I was doing using a modded workbench. And my answer is the following. In my career as an engineer, we are provided with design constraints and design criteria from the client usually. And they say, hey, you can use these things in your projects and you can't use these things in your projects. Maybe a steel beam of a certain size is allowed, but maybe one isn't. And this type of uh, criteria limits the selection of things that we get to use, but it opens the door to creativity and to critical thinking and problem solving. So when they give us a list that says what you can and can't do, that's the first thing you start with when you design your project. And then you think, okay, how can I make it work using the provided or the allowed things? So I compare this to a non-modded workbench or unmodded workbench. And of course, I'm not um, hating on creators that use it. I'm just giving an explanation of why I prefer an unmodded workbench. It's like a modular Lego system. I mean, you can start 3D printing Lego pieces that fit all sorts of different things and different tasks, but I think there's beauty in the original parts and making them work together. Now, of course, I would love to have different types of windows or like more glass instead of like these 3x3 blocks, but I view Stormworks like a different world. Like, it's a world similar to the human world, but it's still different and it has differences. Some things are similar, like I'm saying, and then some are just different. Like the size of the monitors are constrained, obviously, and they're one block thick rather than being a flat screen. But instead of trying to compress it into a more realistic thing, I just use it as it is. Working within the game parameters makes you think about every little piece of how you can make something work instead of just coming across a problem and being like, all right, I'm just gonna manufacture a solution. Now, obviously there's a little more to it than that. And again, I'm not trying to belittle or roast or make fun of or anything, but I, I got criticized why I'm not using this and I'm not too experienced enough or not knowledgeable enough or something. And I mean, first of all, I'm doing this for fun. And it's not like I got offended, but just, I, I find the, parameters of the game and the design parameters that I'm talking about now and the design constraints more realistic and it for sure a more realistic way of doing the game to give it kind of like an extra layer of engineering I do this every day and my, my personal thought is I try to work within the game itself and man I'll tell you you can come up with thousands, millions of different combinations of things. Like, I never once thought, oh, I want to, I'd rather use a modded work workshop other than like windshields, for example. Yeah, in real life, this wouldn't be out of five pieces. It would be one continuous piece. And the front of airplanes and stuff, especially where you have kind of like a, a nicer shape. I will admit, visually, I see the appeal. But also visually, I find beauty in just kind of, it's not conforming, that's not the right word, but rather working within the bounds of the game to develop the most realistic or most interesting looking creation. So take for example this rat, I think SSX is what the name of it is. Now it's not using any modded pieces, but I think the front still looks pretty darn good to the point that, yeah, I could have used a modified piece to make it like extended, or I could have used something to make it like a little more natural or a nicer uh, angle of the windshield. But end of the day, it does its job. I think it looks great. 
and ultimately I enjoyed making stuff like this. Now, a workbench where you get a make a huge, huge vessel is something else. So with this Cochrane ship, I pretty much pushed the bounds of the box, and I'll tell you, it was more than enough. I spent almost eight months working on this creation to make it the right level of detail that I like. And I know that some people, I mean, that there's a lot of interest in making a massive ship, like say twice the size of this using a modded workbench or the size of a Titanic or something. Personally, that's not my style because I prefer more detailed interiors, more detailed elements, like where you actually get to enjoy, call it the artwork. Not, not literally the artwork, but the design that went into the creation and making the spaces come alive instead of just uh, putting like making a huge space with a table or whatever but obviously when it's a huge creation you kind of have to that there's just no way around it it's too big and it would be insane to try to make something that was like full detail so you may be thinking oh but why are you limiting yourself you know you could take or make any type of creation if you were to use uh, the mods or the changing of things. But like, again, I come back to the fact I've made over 50 or 80 or whatever creations without any type of problem. And in fact, like I said, I find beauty in just making things work with the parameters that we have. Now, in addition to all this, my, I have a particular style that I like to make and it's something along the lines of like detailed while not being excessively detailed but also um, to kind of be optimized and lag free like I'd see people making trucks like this with tons of decals and tons of all sorts of 3d stuff but for, for me my own personal style I think this type of thing gets the point across and is functional and that's kind of what, what I ultimately went went for I wanted to make something functional but also look look acceptable and then you come to like my oil rig or some of the vessels and the thing has a hot tub it has a pool table it has luxury accommodations these massive suites with fireplaces it's not really realistic in a normal sense but the way I the way I like to build things in my style is I imagine myself working here or walking around it in real life and thinking how would I like a workplace or a living quarters or something. I've been both on work ships, I've been in the field, coal mines, uh, oil sands mines, I've worked in the little like uh, portable trailers they have, I've worked at site the site camps, I mean yeah they have pool tables, they have bars and things but like I try to visualize the nicest or coolest looking type of place and be like that's where I'd want to work and yeah it may be a little unrealistic and kind of strange considering you have a hot tub here next to this pump but I mean it's like a visualized or stylized type of idea that I like to kind of roll with and that's just my style same with like the helipad and helicopter yeah it's not really a realistic thing but it's about as small as I could make it and it's functional so it gets the job done and it works so that's kind of just a little breakdown of my own um, design style and I think that my fans have noticed that already and kind of just subliminally know all this stuff but it is nice to explain it and break it down for sure so yeah, I wish they added like a fishing version to the game or other types of expansions and DLCs, the sales that I talked about in my last video, other type of things like that. But instead of looking for them in um, by mod modifying the game, I try to think how I can implement them myself within the game and make it work and make it functional and all that good stuff. And that's kind of just how I, I, I operate. And it's not like being closed off and you know the sky's the limit and you can't do anything better than that but it's like just to find such solutions that are elegant and solve the problem yeah you can't have like even this structure in real life 
this wouldn't probably be strong enough to support it. Like you definitely need some more, especially the stairs. They're just attached like here and then not attached anywhere else until up there. So if that wouldn't work structurally, absolutely. I mean, unless you're using like a crazy plate the size of this, but then it would be way too heavy down there. So like we're stuck with this cube that's like uh, one fourth of a meter, I guess it's 25 centimeters and then three of them make the uh, meter or four of them make a meter, sorry. So we're just stuck with them. And yeah, I could make it smaller and reduce it and make it a little more compact. Like this would never be this thick. It would be probably a fourth of that if even, but then you'd have much more structural supports. But then, like I said, this is not trying to be real life. This is in its own world, a world of Stormworks. And it works a little differently than ours. At least that's my rationale. It works a little differently than ours, but it's similar. And we could apply our knowledge in our world into this one to come up with solutions and all that type of good stuff. And this isn't me going on a rant. I don't want anyone to think that I'm ranting or getting annoyed or something. I, I truly do enjoy doing all this. I enjoy making these creations. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for profit. I do it 100% for fun because I just enjoy it. So it's not a rant. It's just a little explanation because I think that some of you may be interested or intrigued or have some questions. And especially that with uh, the modded workbench and the other type of modifications, that's one I get really often. And I just wanted to kind of address it and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video learn something about engineering and I will do more videos specifically catering to the knowledge I have in in the engineering world so stay tuned for that and take care and happy stormworksing